Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Junior Markovich, and today I'll be talking to you about the value of art forgeries. Now, before we can talk about the value of art forgeries, we have to ask ourselves the question, what is art? And that's not really a question I can answer to you, for you. But uh, the definition that we're going with today is that everything is art. Now, in my freshman year, um, in Studio Art One, Mr. Stoner had us all crowd around him. He we bought our stools, and he sat us down and said, everything is art. He pointed to a stapler and said, this is art. And then he pointed to a desk and said, this is art. And then he pointed to a stool and said, this is art. Now, I walked out of that room thinking everything was art, from tiles to cabinets to really anything I saw. But what my definition of art was then is not something that the art world has agreed on. The art world and the art market are two very finicky things. What, what's in for them and what they value is constantly changing with trends and fads and what the viewers value at that time. But one thing that has stayed the same throughout history is that the art world does not value art forgeries. They think they're just copies of original work and that they have no value. But they do. So what is a forgery? Well, a forgery is an exact replica of a copy by another artist. And what we're going with forgeries today is exact replica. And I mean, brushstroke by brushstroke, every little corner of its, this piece is exactly the same. Um, a great example of this is Wolfgang Beltracci. He was a man who copied, who did 50 plus forgeries um, until 2007. He is um, a German, art German forger who copied German artists and he, he is the exact definition of, he made the exact definition of a forgery, exact copies from other artists. He did um, go to prison in 2007 because of that piece up in the corner. Um, the original artist, the only one alive who he copied, saw it and knew it wasn't his work. And he went to prison, he'd been released in 2012. But he created the forgeries that I'm talking about today. Um, we do have to make a dis uh, distinction. There is a difference between a forgery and a fake. A forgery is an exact replica of another piece, while a fake has not existed previously. Um, so a fake is a work that is said to be the work of another artist, but has never been created by that artist. An example I have here is um, Han van Meergen. He's an artist that we'll go um, see in a little bit again, but he created this religious period for Johannes Vermeer. Johannes Vermeer didn't have a religious period. He just, cre Meergen created works under Johannes' name in this fake period so he could sell them for a higher price. So people use the word forgery and fake interchangeably when they're not. A forgery is an exact replica, while a fake is said to be the work of another artist but has not been created by them. So when we talk about forgeries, this is one of them. This is a statue of Sleeping Eros. It is currently at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and it is said to be done by Michelangelo. And it has, but it's not his original idea. Michelangelo began his career as a forger. The way he got his name in the art world was that he would create, um, he would recreate forgeries of um, original sculptures, and then he would break them and he would bury them, pretend to dig them up in the morning, and then he would sell them as if it were, as if they were original statues. And this is an example of that. It's currently at the Metro Metropolitan Museum of Art as a Michelangelo original, and it technically is because he did make it, but it's not his design. So is it authentic to Michelangelo? Is it authentic to the original artist? <laughs> well, we have to ask ourselves, what is authenticity? And again, this is one of those finicky art ter terms that depends on who you ask. If you talk to Noah Charney, the founder of the Association of Crimes Against Art, an um, authentic is an original piece created by an artist to express their own beliefs and ideas. But his is not the only one. If you talk to Jared Levison, art historian and philosopher, his definition of authenticity is if you believe a work is authentic. So if the viewer thinks a work is authentic and they get the same feelings and the same experiences from an, a, a forgery, then it is authentic because it's expressing the same things. Um, we have, again, we have to make a distinction. Art forgery is a crime. If you do make forgeries, like Wolfgang Veltrachi and like Mir Han van Meergen, you will go to jail. They both did. They both served time. They both had to pay extraordinary fines. F 
further work, but it may be an economic crime, but it's not an artistic one. You can still enjoy the forgeries for the art that they have, especially if they're exact replicas. So <clears throat> then go up here. One of these is a forgery and one of these is not. Um, this is a girl with a pearl hearing. The original one was done by Han von, oh, sorry, by, done by Johannes Vermeer, and the other one was done by Han von Mirgen. <clears throat> and there is no difference between these two paintings. You, the viewer cannot tell the difference with your eye. No matter, I've looked at these and tried to find things. There really is nothing you can find. And if you can experience the same forged piece as you would the original one, that forged piece should still hold the same artistic value as the original piece. Um, so <clears throat> why am I talking about this? Why does this even matter? Who, who really cares about whether a forgery is valued or not? And there's really two distinct reasons. And there can be more. Forgeries are made. I said, like I said, they've existed since the beginning of time. But one of, one of the big reasons is access. Not many people can go to Europe willy-nilly and go look at art that's there. It's just impossible. No one has the time, no one has the money to see every famous painting throughout the world. This is a map of the world, just the world museums. This is not even a handful of them. And you can see how spread out they are. Um, I've, in New York, there are museums that are right next to each other, and you know, no one's going to be able to, or I mean, like, no one will be able to visit all of these museums ever, That's, I mean, unless you really have the energy and time to do it. So what forgeries can do is they can provide access to people who can't visit these places. If we can have a forgery of famous paintings that are in London or that are in China or that are in India that are in the US that people can go see, then, and if they're exact replicas, they should still, they sh can be valuable and people can experience them as original pieces. And the next big thing, and maybe the biggest reason I think forgery should be value, valued, is that they can preserve history and culture. So there are pieces of work that people cannot see today. Normal people don't have access to them, whether it's because they're decaying and just over time, whether it's because they've been maltreated, whether it's <coughs> because they've been destroyed in war, or they're too sensitive to touch the light. There are pieces that we can't see. And forgeries can let the viewers experience older pieces as if they were made in that time, or as if they can even see them today. There is a Madrid-based company called Factum Arte, and they, um, in, their, in their company, they make forgeries. That is their job. It takes them years, and over, they have over 300 artists. But their goal is to make forgeries of works that viewers cannot see anymore. This is an example. This is Tutankhamun's tomb. Um, this is in Madrid today, and it's, it lets viewers go in and see and, and experience King Tut's tomb as if it was made in that time, and they can go experience. That's really the biggest part of this, is that you can go and experience these pieces as artistic, as artistic pieces, and and really get the feelings and the emotions you would as a normal one. That no one can enter this tomb now. It's decaying. It's it can collapse on you. There's no way a normal citizen would be, ever be able to see this. And this forgery lets lets normal people experience it. And um, this last one is um, the wedding at Cana. This is a forgery that's currently being held at the Louvre. It's, um, they know it's a forgery, they actually commissioned it to be made. Now this original piece was taken by the Germans in World War II and maltreated, and to this point the original one today cannot be seen. It's, it's too sensitive, it's past the point of conservation. And the Louvre wanted it back. So they commissioned Factum Arte to make this piece. And um, <clears throat> again, this piece is currently sitting there as the original piece. And that's really where I'm going to leave you all today. Because if you can have a piece that's currently sitting at the loop, who's said to be authentic, it's not. It's a forgery made by Factum Arte. Then why can't we experience that with all of other pieces? And why can't we value forgeries as artistic pieces instead of just discounting them because they weren't made by the original artist? It's all good.